couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And this lesson is going to be particularly awesome because I'm going to give you the ultimate beginner's guide to alternate tunings. I'm going to teach you no less than eight alternate tunings. Most of them are going to be open tunings, so you can experiment with them. And I'm also going to give you many, many tips and tricks on how to improvise and experiment with open tunings. So the very basic alternate tuning, you probably already know it, it's drop D. Drop D is an alternate tuning because it's not the standard tuning. The standard tuning is E, A, D, G, B, E. And for drop D, you detune the sixth string down to D, down a whole step. The easiest way to do it without a tuner is to play the D string, the fourth, and play the sixth string along with it while detuning it until you hear the malign. Line. And if you go too far, don't worry, just retune it back up until you hear them align. See? It's a very strong feeling once you hear them align. And basically, the thing to remember about drop D tuning is whenever you have a chord with the sixth string in it, just compensate for the detuning and play it two frets up. For example, if you have G, then instead of three on the bass, you'll play it on five, two frets up. So you'll have three on the E string and five on the sixth string. And you'll play, uh, you'll mute the A string, okay, using your finger here, because you don't want to play something like this. Okay, this is too uncomfortable. So it's this. And you'll probably play it in finger style, so you'll play strings one, two, three, and six anyway, so you won't need the fifth string. And that's for G. Now the drop D tuning gives us a low D bass, so you have you know a very rich D chord. Or a very, very deep D minor chord. Okay? How strong is that? Now, um, for many, many classical arrangements, you have a drop D tuning, especially for Bach arrangements, because um, the drop D tuning actually utilizes uh, the guitar in a really, really smart way. Um, but we'll not, we won't get into it right now. Just know that you have the drop D tuning as your basic alternate tuning. Now, the second alternate tuning is taking the A string and detuning it to G. Now it's a drop D G tuning because you tune the sixth string down to D and you tune the fifth string down to G so you can compare it to the third string which is G. Okay, until you hear them align. Okay, or if you went too low just tune it back up and compare it to the third string. And this, the drop D G tuning or drop G tuning is actually an open G6 chord, okay? Because you have a G chord here, and uh, the open E string is the sixth of a G chord. So we have G6, an open G6. Now, if you want to play a G chord, put three on the E string, and then you have a G chord. Now, this um, alternate tuning is actually very rare because it's very, very arrangement specific. It's called for when you need a low G bass and a low D bass. For example, if you're playing a high G chord and you want, you know, a full G chord sound and also, you know, a low uh, D bass as well in your arrangement. So the open G6 is just a step between the drop D and the open G. Now for open G, you play this D, G, Okay, as your bass notes, the rest of the guitar, you know, strings two, three, and four remain the same. And you tune the E down to D. Okay, and you have an open G tuning. Now, here we start toying around with open tunings because we have the chord as our tuning. Now, the uses for this are, you know, are almost infinite. You can play um, on this one, on open G, you can toy around with uh, voicings of G, C, and D like this. You have 12, 12, and 12 for G. 
you have kind of an F-shaped chord, but on strings 2, 3, and 4, you'll play 10, 11, and 12 for a D chord. Okay? Then you have the low D bass. Okay? And you take this two frets down for C. And this sounds really interesting too. Then you have D here. Okay? Five, uh, seven, seven, and seven. Okay? From the bar. But you have the rest of the guitar tuned down. And you can take this down to C. And you can play uh, three, four, and five on strings two, three, and four for a G chord. Okay? And then play this. Or you can play A. This is an interesting chord here. Or you can play, um, you know, this. From the C chord, you can play one and two on strings two and four. Okay? And then play this. And you can toy around with it. fun of open tunings starts with uh, frets two and four. Now this is the fun thing about open tunings. Mostly you can use frets two and four and open strings to create magic. Let me show you what I mean. You see, you can just experiment with frets two and four on the four bass strings. Okay, and on the second string you only have two. Okay. Okay. You can play one if you want it in the scale on the second string. But I think two gives it an interesting feel. Okay. experiment with um, with frets two and four and see what you can come up with but remember to blend many many open strings inside so you can get the harp sort of sound going okay, now why do frets two and four work so well because you have D B G D G D so you have three D strings and two G strings and uh, if it works on on one uh, string, it'll work on on the three others, and if it works on one G string, it will work on the other. Okay, so okay, you'll have a really interesting scale here. Now, on the second string, you can play one if you want it in the scale. Okay, or you can play two if you want an interesting mode. Okay. okay, it's an interesting sound, so you can experiment with that. Okay. And if you want a blues sort of sound, play frets 3 and 5. Okay, again, all except for the second string, give it a bluesy sound. And since you have G here, then you have C on the 5th fret, and you have D on the 7th. Okay, so you can play a rock and roll, or a country uh, riff, or a blues riff. Now, um, for a blues riff, you have 2 and 3 here. And since we're playing it on the D string, you can play it on the D string. Or the D bass string. Okay, and you can do the same with C. You can play two frets up and three frets up. Okay, or you can take a slide and have a little fun. Now I'm used to playing the traditional sort of sliding, so. You 
can play around with frets three and five to get the bluesy sound. Okay, I just wanted to give you an example of um, of slide guitar using the open um, the open tuning. But this is not a slide lesson. This is an open tuning lesson. So let's move on to the next one. The next one would be an open G minor. And you just take the B string, the second string, and tune it one half step down to B flat. Okay, you can play three on the third string and see if you're right. Okay, okay, and then you have you have G minor here. Now for G minor. Yeah, you do have two on the second string. And this being G minor, you'll want to use the blues scale. Okay, so you have two on the second string. That's the only difference. Just don't use two and four, just use three and five. And then if you want, you know, the fourth here, then you'll play a bar on five again for C minor, but you'll want D major. So just play um, one fret up, compensate for the D tuning on the second string. And you'll have D, okay? Bar on seven, eight on the second string, okay? And if you want the sixth also, uh, then you can play it one fret up, okay? And you'll have E flat. Okay, so experiment with that. It'll give you a sort of a classical sort of open tuning. Okay, so the next tuning, let's tune this back up. Okay, the next tuning is gonna be the um, modern acoustic finger style tuning, which is dad gad. It's D A D G A D. And we already have D, D, and G here and also D here. So we'll tune the B down a whole step to A. Okay? Until you get that crystalline sound. And use this to tune G up to A. Okay? And you have this. Now, the same rules apply. Two and four, and three and five. Three and five for the minor, two and four for the major. Right? So just experiment with that the same way you experimented with the open G tuning, you get the same results. Okay, three and five give you the blues, two and four give you that, um, tapestry of magic. So um, this is actually uh, D sus4 tuning and to tune it to open D all you need to do is tune the G string from G to F sharp. And you'll hear the major chord. And again you have the same idea here and it's the same idea with the slide so Okay, the open strings are D, and then on five you have you have G, and then on seven you have A. And again, on five and three you have the blue scale, the minor scale. And you can also experiment with six, with eight, with ten, with twelve. I'm not too good with a slide, I'm just fooling around, but open tunings are for fooling around. So just fool around with it. This is the open D tuning. Now the next one, for the next one, we're gonna have to work a little bit to retune our guitar. So okay, we have E and B. Okay, so we have 
Okay, E, B, and G again. And now we also have A and we have D. So, okay, we have drop D again. Okay, we're back to drop D. Let's tune the sixth string down to C. You can, you can compare it with with G, and that gives you a sort of a power chord. And tune the, um, the A string down to G again. Okay? So you get sort of a strange open C major 7 um, tuning, and you can call it drop C, G. So you have C and G on the bass notes. Now, again, this is very arrangement specific, and it's a step between the open, the standard tuning and our next tuning. But you can also use that. You can play the C chord like this. Again, one and two on strings two and four. And you'll have an interesting sort of deep C chord. Okay, and also G using strings three, four, and five. And you can play three on the second string or three on the first string. Now, as it is right now, it's a drop C, G tuning, and again, it's not very, very applicable, but it pays to know these things. You might come across an arrangement you really, really like, and you'll want to transcribe it, but the tuning will sound really uh, weird, really low, and you'll see the guy playing or the girl playing, you know, interesting chords, but they look like D and F and, you know, normal chords, and you'll ask yourself, what's going on? doesn't sound right and then you'll remember hey the bass note sounds really low so maybe I should try C and it'll work so it pays to know these things now I said that this is the middle step between the standard tuning and our last open tuning which is open C so for open C you need to tune the sixth ring down to C then the fifth ring down to G then the D string down to C so compare it to the bass note and then you have G again, and then you tune the B string up to C, right? So compare it either to the fourth or the sixth string. And you have E as your first string anyway. This is open C. How rich is that? It's a bit low. But it's so much fun, it fills the room. So C, G, C, G, C, and E. Now again, you can do the same shtick. we didn't change anything on E. So on E, just play the normal C scale. Okay? Okay, you see, and just, you know, just let your fingers flow. Now, don't forget, add many, many open strings to whatever you play. Just choose a couple of frets, toy around, you know, just fool around them, and add as many open strings as you possibly can. and try to see how that sounds. You can also, you know, hammer them on while doing the Ted Bundy thing of um, tapping and pulling off back to zero while playing hammered on chords. 
Um, there's no limit to what you can do with open tunings, actually. It sounds very, very restrictive because you have an open chord as your basic tuning, but it really frees up your playing. Now, granted, too many open tunings can become a bit boring and a bit repetitive because you can recognize an open tuning and you can't really do that many chords using open tunings unless you actually sit down and learn the new chord shapes that go along with it. You see? Normal chord shapes don't apply here. So that's why open tunings are a bit difficult when you want to really soar with them. But as you know, as an exercise and improvisation and in ear training and in finger style and in slide, open tunings are amazing. They're an amazing tool and um, you know, it pays to know open tunings because you never know when you might learn something interesting in open tuning. And that's the lesson for now. Go to the website to download the instruction sheet and the cheat sheet. And I'll see you in the next lesson. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do right now. What have you got to lose? There's tons of material already on Lick and Riff. And uh, I upload a new lesson every few days to a week. So join the Lick and Riff community. I'd love to have you here. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Enjoy.